On this edition for Sunday, August 9th, questions about the president's powers after his executive orders. The risk of speeding up the census count. Six years after. PBS NewsHour Weekend is made possible by Sue and Edgar Wachenheim III, the Anderson Family Fund, Bernard and Denise Schwartz, the Cheryl and Philip Milstein family, Barbara Hope Zuckerberg, Charles Rosenblum. We try to live in the moment to not miss what's right in front of us. At Mutual of America, we believe taking care of tomorrow can help you make the most of today. Mutual of America Financial Group, retirement services and investments. For 25 years, Consumer Cellular has been offering no-contract wireless plans designed to help people do more of what they like. Our U.S.-based customer service team can help find a plan that fits you. To learn more, visit ConsumerCellular.tv. Additional support has been provided by and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a private corporation funded by the American people, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The day after President Trump signed four different documents on COVID-19 economic relief, both critics and supporters are trying to figure out what is possible and what is legal. Democratic leaders called the executive actions unconstitutional and said they won't provide necessary relief to Americans. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer criticized the president's plan to provide $400 in weekly emergency unemployment benefits, $200 less than the benefit that expired one week ago. States would also have to pay 100 of those dollars. This is an unworkable plan. Um, most states will take months to implement it because it's brand new. It's sort of put together with spit and paste. And many states, because they have to chip in $100 and they don't have money, won't do it. Yesterday, the president said one of the orders would provide a temporary payroll tax cut, which he said would become permanent after the election. If I'm victorious on November 3rd, I plan to forgive these taxes and make permanent cuts to the payroll tax. I'm going to make them all permanent. The executive order Mr. Trump signed defers payroll taxes but does not cut them, meaning employers and workers could still be responsible for paying them later. Payroll taxes help fund Social Security and Medicare. And today, White House economic advisor Larry Kudlow tried to clarify what the president meant when he said the cut would be permanent. When he referred to permanent, I think what he was saying is that the deferral of the payroll tax to the end of the year will be made permanent. It will be forgiven. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said she hopes that the White House will come back to the negotiating table and did not commit to a legal challenge. Right now, we want to address the needs of the American people. Uh, as, as constitutional, my constitutional advisors tell me they're absurdly unconstitutional. I spoke with political reporter Caitlin Emma, who is covering the president's actions. Caitlin, when we saw the president lay out his executive orders yesterday, one of the first questions was, what is within his rights and his powers to do versus Congress that approves spending? These executive orders, and I think it's worth noting that actually only one of them is an executive order. The rest were memorandums. In a sense, they, they carry a little bit less weight in that way. but. You know, certainly I think we're already seeing some of these, um, you know, orders, memos, uh, kind of in the legal crosshairs. So it, it's certainly, uh, there are definitely a lot of questions, I guess, about the legality of some of the things that he's proposing here. In one of the Q&As with reporters, he said, we've got plenty of money that we haven't spent yet. How much money are we talking about? And can it fund all the things that we're trying to get funded? You know, states have only spent... Uh, about a quarter of, of the money that they received through the CARES Act, uh, which was about $150 billion. And that's become a popular uh, Republican talking point in these negotiations and arguing that, you know, more state and local aid isn't necessary. And look, they, all these states have all this money that they haven't spent. Um, but that really varies wildly across states. And a lot of the money that hasn't been spent is already spoken for and that it's been allocated for a specific purpose. So. Asking governors to pick up any part of the tab for unemployment benefits is going to be a very difficult ask, especially when they say that they're already grappling with inadequate levels of federal aid. Finally, 
Regardless of what negotiators in Washington agree to or not, what that check level is, when does it actually get to people who right now might really need that $600 to pay rent or pay for food? It's really unclear when these uh, you know, supposed payments would go out. It's unclear how many states would be able to pick up the tab for the rest of the $400 a week payment. You know, this is a, it's a very uncertain situation at the moment, both in terms of legality and when some of these things would actually take effect to, to potentially help people. Kaylin Emma from Politico, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. As political leaders grapple over economic relief, the United States reached a grim milestone in the coronavirus pandemic. There are now more than 5 million confirmed infections in the U.S., by far the most in the world. The death toll is now more than 162,000, according to researchers at Johns Hopkins University. The number of daily infections is falling on average from highs experienced in mid-July. Globally, the number of confirmed cases is approaching 20 million, but the virus is not spreading everywhere. Today, New Zealand marked 100 days without a domestic transmission of coronavirus. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern warned against complacency even as many in New Zealand have returned to normal life. 100 days is a, a milestone to mark, but again, we still need to be vigilant regardless. Five days after a massive explosion in Beirut, international